When you get any new fish from any source, I always highly recommend that you do a quarantine process on those fish. Because there are parasites, diseases, bacterial infections that can come into your, your fish room, your tank, if you have just one tank, they can cause issues for many other fish, but it's also because we wanna make sure the new fish we're bringing in are healthy for their purposes as well. So we brought in, as you know, we brought in a beautiful male and female discus to hopefully pair them off. But now that they're here, I have found what I believe to be an internal parasite in the male discus, but I'm gonna teach you how we're gonna treat that tonight. So welcome back to the fishing room, everybody. It's been an exciting time here as we've definitely been bringing some exceptional fish into the fish room here at Well Done Tanks, and I'm very excited about to be working with. If you know, previously, I actually did have a group of six discus that were the uh, diamond, the blue diamond discus. Beautiful fish, right? We did a, a video where we talked about why we moved away from them. I actually gave them to Guppy Guru, who then brought them to the waterfront. So in a long roundabout sense, they're now back in my possession in a way. But after talking with Lewis, he was kind of nudging me in the direction of, are you sure you don't want to try discus again? So after some discussion, he offered me a gorgeous panda map male and a red melon female. Now, we're, uh, we're not crossing the same genetics with these fish, but what we are crossing is the genetics for a beautiful body of the fish. So the way these fish are actually, you know, have grown the head, the color, the shape of the fins, all of that, they are phenomenal discus, and we want to continue those, li that lineage of that. And I think it'd be kind of cool if we can cross these two, uh, these two color variants to see what we come out with. But the issue is, I noticed since we moved them here to the fish room in the, about the week time frame that I've had them, the female discus is eating without question. She takes readily accepted food, uh, krill flake from Extreme. She's accepted just tropical flake. She's done you know, pellets I put in there. But the male discus has not seemed to eat while he's been here. Now I can say for sure that when he was at the shop, he was eating, but something, something changed. And I think that change is an internal parasite cropped up. Now, where that parasite originally came from, I don't know. But that's also why I recommend you quarantine all fish that come into a, a system. Let's say, if you're adding fish to one tank, if you're adding fish to a fish room, I highly recommend that you quarantine that. And fortunately enough, when we set up this 20 gallon to potentially breed these discus, they were the only fish going into this system. So I knew that if I needed to quarantine, I could do that here in this 20 gallon tank that they are in. Now, I say I believe it's an internal parasite because the, the actual fecal matter of the fish will tell you a lot about the health of your fish. I noticed a large, white, stringy fecal matter being you know, expressed from the fish, and that's my, my first insight to, I believe this fish picked up an internal parasite. Now, chances are, if the male has it, there's a good chance the female also has it, so it's not gonna damage either fish to treat them for the internal parasite. Now, I did a couple steps to prepare for this treatment, as I wanna have the best success possible is, because let's be honest, these are fairly expensive fish, but it's also, I don't want to lose fish in my possession. It's never fun losing fish. So let me walk you through the steps I am taking to help this discus get rid of the internal parasite that I believe it has. So step number one is I did a fairly large water change. Now in the process of doing that water change, I also siphoned out the bottom of the tank. With discus, I find it best to keep them on a bare bottom tank, so it wasn't hard to siphon out all the debris off the bottom of the tank. But from there, I siphoned out all of the poop on the bottom of the tank, all of the uneaten food, because I want to start with a fresh you know, slate, have you, to treat these fish. But I also do not want the fish ingesting any internal tapeworms back into them. Because what you need to do is we need to clean the fish out but then also kill any worms that are expressed from the fish during this time frame. Now with the water change, also the reason is, is because 
we're probably not going to do a water change for three to seven days. Now, following the guidelines of what medication you choose to go with, that's what we're gonna be in the range of, but I am one of, I will let it sit for a couple days, do a water change, you know, then and over the course of a couple days, water change out all of the medication and then, you know, redose it to keep that going from there. So that was the first initial, I guess two, two steps have you. They're kind of go tandem is I siphoned out all of the debris and I did a very large water change because I want the best water quality that I can offer these fish for this time frame. Now, step number three, this is gonna be choosing the medication of your choice. Now, I'm going to be using the Paracleanse from Fritz. I personally think this is, well, I'm gonna say this, I've had the best success using this medication. Now, there are definitely going to be other medications on the market, come on, that will treat your fish. You know, it doesn't have to be by Fritz. This is what I have access to. This is what I have used the most. And this is what I've had the best success with in treating internal parasites. Now, the reason I am also using this is this doses the water column of the tank. Now, I'm a big believer on medicated food is very difficult to use in my opinion. Now, granted, this is my opinion. This is my experience. So. Dosing the paracleanse is going to be dosed into the water column. We're basically going to be soaking the fish with this medication as they take, you know, breathe, they take water into their body. That's going to bring the medication into them. Using medicated food, it's very difficult to actually treat the fish. One of the first things I said in this video was that the male discus, who I believe has the internal parasite, has not been eating. So if your fish is not eating, it's near impossible to get them to ingest that medicated food to then thoroughly clean that fish out internally. Now, if you think about it in a way of, if you don't feel good, a lot of times you don't like to eat. Same thing here with the discus. Because he may not feel good, so to say, he probably doesn't want to eat because the energy of eating just feeds the tapeworm, so we need to get that cleaned out. Now, that's the biggest reason I like to dose the water column versus using medicated food because then I can also, I feel like I have a better chance of treating the fish by dosing the water column because I have a higher rate of the medication entering the fish's body versus a medicated food where I have no control over how much medication actually gets into the fish's system. Now from there, when they express the worms through their fecal matter, any internal parasite they may have, Dosing the water column is going to help destroy that worm versus medicated food. It's not going to do much for us. So unfortunately, internal parasites do happen with fish. It's one of the things we run into in this hobby, especially on wild caught fish. Now, I've, I've had numerous wild caught fish in my fish room, currently in my fish room, and they're all hack, you know, active, healthy, thriving. So we are going to treat this discus up and treat the female at the same time. Hopefully get them cleaned out to where they are happy, healthy again. Get this guy fattened back up and conditioned for breeding because I am very excited to have these fish in the fishroom. As you know, we did our, on one of our last videos on. So I have a question of the day for you though. I do want to know, do you prefer to use a medication that you dose the water column or do you prefer to use a, a medicated food to actually try and feed your fish? So I'm always curious to help learn from you guys and your experiences. But if this video did help, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and we'll talk to you guys in the next one.